Would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, my name's Isaac Baruch, I-S-A-A-C-B-A-R-U-C-H. Mr. Baruch, where do you currently live? I live in Los Angeles. Do you know the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? Yes. How do you know Mr. Depp? I know him from, since teenagers. Uh, we met in Florida. And could you tell the jury a little bit about your experience meeting Mr. Depp when you were teenagers in Florida? Yeah, uh, we were both playing in bands. We had mutual friends and uh, that we met in probably 1980. And uh, yeah, we hit it off. We got along with each other. And uh, yeah. That's... How often did you see Mr. Depp when you were teenagers together in Florida? A few times, uh, a few times uh, a month, I'd say it could be more, a little more or whatever, because, you know, we'd see each other at parties and clubs, nightclubs where the bands played. Yeah, like that. And for how long were you both um, living in Florida and seeing each other somewhat regularly? Well, we, we met in like 1980, so... Uh, and then we both moved away. He moved to California. I moved to New York. What was that, 80? From 80 to 83, that, what's that, like four years? What were your impressions of Mr. Depp while you were um, both living in Florida at the same time? Oh, he's, he's a sweet kid. He's, he's, a objection. sweet guy. Sir, sir, wait, there's an objection. Oh. Thank you. What his impressions were back then? Oh, what's the relevance? Just to... establishing the background and the All relationship, right. Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Next question, please. All right. Um, Mr. Bruch, did there come a time when Mr. Depp uh, moved away from Florida? Yeah, yeah. And where did he move to, if you know? Like I said before, he moved to California. At some point in time, did you also move to California? Yeah. And did you um, reconnect with Mr. Depp when you got there? Yeah. Around what time was that? Pro sometime during the first year and... Uh, then afterwards, after the first year, uh, more and stuff, yeah. About what year would you say that was? Oh, I moved to California in uh, September of uh, 85. And did you know um, if Mr. Depp was working when you arrived in California in, in 1985? Well, I knew, I knew he was pursuing acting at that time. Yeah, I, 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 he's looking for work because he's pursuing acting. I, How often did you see uh, Mr. Depp when you first moved to California? Well, like I said, the first year, a few times. Afterwards, I had a friend who, uh, whose girlfriend uh, lived in the same building as Johnny. And that, so then hanging out over there, I ended up seeing Johnny more often. And plus, my friend, who, I, who I'm talking about, who, whose girlfriend lived in the same building, he was playing in a band, and they needed another guitar player, and Johnny ended up joining the band, so we were hanging out a lot more often. Um, what were you doing when you moved out to California? I was pursuing music also, working retail jobs and trying to get a band, make a band. Yeah. Did there come a time when you began working for Mr. Depp? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When was that? Oh, that's later on. That's like in 1993. What were you doing for Mr. Depp when you started working for him in 1993? Well, he owned a place called the Viper Room, and uh, which is a music venue, a nightclub, bar, and bands play. And uh, it was already open for six months. And uh, the girl who was working, the, the person who was working the, as office manager didn't want to work there anymore. So the guy who was running the place for Johnny, who was a, a friend named Sal Jenko, another Florida friend from back in 1980, when we all first meet, he calls me up and he says, hey, Isaac, do you want to do work this job? I don't think it's offered for the I truth of the matter. Or, I mean, that, can we that's fine. I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. At some point in time, did you stop working at the Viper Room for Mr. Depp? Oh, yeah. When was that? 
Well, I worked from 93 to 98. In 98, I moved away. Did you return to L.A. again at some point? Yes, I did. When was that? I moved back uh, December of 2002. What did you do um, for work when you returned to L.A.? Well, I, for two weeks I worked at an art gallery and then I uh, went back to the Viper Room on New Year's Eve. How long were you working at the Viper Room at that point in time? It was another year and then the place changed hands. Were you working um, on anything else while you were working at the Viper Room in that time frame? Yeah, I, I was work uh, sidewise. I was teaching myself art. And what steps were you taking to teach yourself art at that time? Books, learning how to draw and uh, paint, and uh, taking community uh, college classes. At some point in time, did you uh, begin pursuing art at a, on a full-time mm -hmm. scale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that come about? Well, I was working at, working at the Viper Room, taking classes, and then at, uh, uh, at one point, the club changed hands completely after a year, 2004. And I was given a choice of either keep working for these new owners or uh, Johnny out of his pocket was going to give a severance pay to whoever didn't want to work there uh, anymore. So I took the severance pay and then it helped me continue on to, to finish community classes, private classes, and then be able to transfer to uh, Cal State University. And did you get a degree from Cal State University? Yes, I did. What degree was that? BFA. What year? 2010. Um, after you received your BFA, did you continue to pursue art full-time? Yeah. Did Mr. Depp ever express an interest in your art? Yeah. When was the first time that happened? Well, first time you saw a painting in 2008. And then the next time was 20, uh, 2012. Uh, I had uh, made a painting and sent it to my best friend uh, uh, email uh, in an email. And uh, he forwarded it to Johnny. And Johnny emailed back saying, hey, when Isaac wants to sell that, uh, whenever he wants to sell that, to go ahead and get in touch with me because I want to buy it. Did Mr. Depp ever buy that painting? No. Why not? Because when I brought over paintings, I, I had moved back to uh, California, and I, w I brought over a bunch of paintings for him to look at and see if he wants any. To buy, buy any, and he looked at me and says, I got an idea. How about I be a patron? And we put together an art show, make some, make, make a body of work and then we'll, I'll throw a party and invite people and I'll sell the stuff for you and you could keep all the money. So he didn't, he didn't buy any paintings there. Instead, he offered me a complete patronship. So what did you understand he meant by um, becoming your patron? Well, he was going to financially make it possible for me to just paint every day and put together a body of work so that way then it could be sold. How did he plan to do that? Objection to what he planned on doing. What did you understand he planned to do to, well, to could, make that possible for you? I could tell you, I could tell you that uh, it, it, what it included was that the next day I ended up moving into, he, 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 uh, I, I moved into a, a art studio penthouse at the Eastern Columbia building, it was, listen, I got a place for you to go ahead and li uh, live and work and put the, this body of, of art together, and uh, I'll take care of you. You don't have to worry about anything. And what was the place where you were going to live that Mr. Depp offered you? The Eastern Columbia building. Did you, um, did you take him up on that offer to live at the Eastern Columbia building? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, how did that make you feel? I started crying is, you know, one day, you, one day you're in your mother's garage selling paintings for a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars on eBay. Next thing you know, you, you, it's an art show and like you don't have to worry about deadly squat.
course, of course. I, I was I was flipping out. When did you move into the Eastern Columbia building? The next day after we met and we talked. The next day, the next day, I get I get a phone call from a guy named Kevin Murphy who is working for Johnny, and I go to and he says, "Hey, meet me at this address," and I go to, and I meet him. And here I am in front of this building. This is a beautiful building. This is like, you know, it's whatever, 13 floors, but it's like from the 1930s, some Art Deco, beautiful building. And I'm looking, I'll go, all right, this is unreal. What, there's gonna be, you know, all right, it's gonna be one of these apartments or whatever, one of these places here. I go in with uh, Kevin Murphy. He takes me all the way up to the roof. We go, we go to, uh, into penthouse two, and this, I walk in and I'm like crying, going, "This is a, it's beautiful. This is like a, a mansion uh, situation to me." Mr. Bridge, how long did you end up living at the Eastern Columbia Building? Three years and seven months. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to show the witness plaintiff's exhibit one sixteen. All right, one sixteen. Mr. Bruch, do you recognize the document um, that you're looking at that's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 116? Yeah. What, and what is it? This is uh, the floor plan of the roof, uh, all the penthouses up on, uh, on the roof at uh, the Eastern Columbia. And that's the building where you lived um, starting in uh, March 2013, is that right? I moved in the first week of uh, March uh, 2013, yeah. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to move into um, evidence, Plaintiff's Exhibit 116, please. No objection, Your Honor. All right, 116 in evidence. You can publish to the jury. Is it? I'm sorry, Your Honor. I just want to be sure that. Yeah, they, they can see it in the gallery. See okay. it. We'll just have to work on that right, screen. Thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Bruch, can you um, describe for the jury what um, is depicted here in Exhibit 116? Uh, yeah, that uh, so the right side of this uh, graph is uh, there's a pool there, there's a uh, there's uh, another uh, top of another apartment that actually starts on the floor below. It's a two-story apartment. Um, but there's a pool there, and there's a, a, a gym workout room. And the left side, there's a at the bottom, there's an X, and that's uh, the elevator. And so you walk out of the elevator, you make a little uh, left, and there's part of Penthouse Five right there, straight ahead. And then you keep walking straight and then you make a left a sharp left and the actual penthouse five is straight ahead and then you hang a right and you walk start walking up that way on your right is going to be penthouse one on your left is going to be penthouse four when you get to the end of that corridor this is the door for penthouse three and if you hang a right Oh, look, there it is. It came up on the screen. <laughs> and if you hang a right and you go down to the end is the door to penthouse two. That's the apartment that I lived in. And who did you understand owned these penthouses? Oh, Johnny owned them all. Which one did you live in? Penthouse two. Was anyone else living um, in the penthouses at the time that you moved in in March 2013? No, I was the first one to move in. I moved in the first week of March, and then a couple of weeks later, two, three weeks later, then Johnny and Amber moved in, and then after that, the next one to move in is Rocky, Raquel Pennington, Amber's uh, friend, and then at some point her sister moved in, Whitney, and uh, also uh, at some point uh, Rocky's uh, boyfriend, moved in with her in penthouse one. So I believe you just testified that uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard moved in uh, shortly after you moved in, is that right? Yes. And which penthouse did they move into? Penthouse three. 
And then you testified, I believe, that um, uh, someone named Rocky Pennington moved in? Yes. Who was Rocky Pennington? Amber Heard's friend from Texas, and I, I think they made, I don't know, I'm not sure if they told me that they moved out there together or something like that, but um, yeah, her friend. And later you said that um, her boyfriend moved in with her. What was his name? Josh, Josh Drew. And which unit did they live in? Penthouse One. And I believe you also testified that um, Whitney moved in. Who was Whitney? Whitney uh, Heard. Uh, she's married, so she's got a different last name. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, Amber's sister, Whitney. And which of the units did um, Ms. Heard's sister li live in? Four. Um, can you tell the jury a little bit about your relationships um, with Ms. Heard, um, Ms. Pennington, Mr. Drew, um, and uh, Ms. Heard, um, sister? Oh, yeah, I, I was friends with all of them. I loved them all. They all treated me with respect. Was, we had, it was great. Uh, you know, I'm an old time friend of Johnny's living, living there and we we're looking out for each other. We became great friends. I fell in love with the, all of them. When you moved in um, to Penthouse 2, you were working on an art show with Mr. Depp, right? Yeah, that that's the entire reason that I'm there is to to, the, to uh, uh, work and put together this art show. Did you have a time frame that you expected to be able to put on that art show? At first, when we first powwowed this idea, when you know, uh, it's it, we talked about all right, what do we do? You know, what's what's this show going to be? What do, how many paintings? Is it, is it going to be? And we came up with a number. Okay, so there's going to be a certain body of work. I'm not, I'm not a known person. I'm just some schnook painter. It's, so there's, and if I was a famous painter, I could make five paintings and, and the room will fill up. But so we decided, okay, like 25 pieces of work, large scale. And, I, and Johnny says, hey, what, how long do you think this will take? I said, I've never done it before. I don't know, maybe a few months. And were you able to comp complete the paintings in the in a few months? No, it's it's <laughs> after. It took me to, to in order to make two large scale paintings. It took me like uh, to almost two months, and I'm t I'm start freaking out. Going, uh, I'm only got two paintings, and all right, I got to do twenty five. I said a few months. So I ended up going to Johnny's place and, and saying, hey, look, dude, this is going to take a lot longer than a, 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 a few months. I, don't, I could only make two paintings. And how did Mr. Depp react? He looks at me and he starts laughing and he says, Ike, don't worry. I do not care. I just want you to paint however long it takes. Just I want you to paint every day. During the course of the time that you were living at the Eastern Columbia building, um, did Mr. Depp ever give you any money? Yeah. How much did he give you? Over a period of four years of the patronship, I, ca I ballpark calculated probably around 100000 And how, how did you come up with that amount? Well, from the first from the first get go, when I said, hey, look, I need dough, you know, to buy stuff and, and, and to, you know, do this. He, I ended up getting an envelope the next day with five thousand dollars in it, and then I budgeted it and and stretched it out, and you know, and so every few months I I get an envelope. It could have uh, that uh, I didn't know if it was going to be the same amount, but it ended up being the same amount, which was wow. Uh, so basically, around five grand every few months. So in a year, it's 20 grand. But then also, there was a period, uh, maybe a, a year or two, might have been that it was five times I had to ask for, for dough, or it was four. And then on top of it, so, I, so right there, that could be 80 grand or 90 grand. And then on top of that, I ended up uh, uh, getting a herniated disc. He sent me to the doctors 
to get an MRI and, and see the doctor, get an MRI. And it, there was 10 weeks of, of uh, therapy that he covered. So I throw that in there too. And I ended up coming up with the figure of 100, 100 grand. Could be a little less, could be a little more. What was your understanding of whether Mr. Depp intended to be paid back for the oh. money that he provided to you? There's no, it's, he, that's not even the thought of being paid back. This is something that he wanted to see happen. This is something he, he invested in. To, 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 he knew was, he, had to, he was going to spend money to make it happen for me to survive and paint and create this thing that he wanted to see because he liked the art. And so there was, and there was no payback. And the, the whole thing was about him selling the art so that way I, so that way I keep all the money. He didn't expect anything. It was, he was doing this as a friend, as he's done with many other friends. I'll sustain the last sentence of his, his, his statement. Right, we, we've done that, but that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Bruch, did there come a time when you um, decided that you planned to pay Mr. Depp back? Oh, yeah. That, f for me, when, uh, when he, he, he's, he's told me he had a money situation going on, for me, it was like, this guy just changed. He's been... He's been uh, making it possible for me to live and work and and and, and make product, and that and and I'm uh, by that expense, I'm part of the problem. It's like, how do I help him? How how can I help him? I mean, he's sharing his sandwich with me, you know. It's like if I how do I how do I share that my half my sandwich with him? Give him that half to make something up. That's it's you you don't you don't not do anything, and said so the only thing I got is paintings, so I I stood up when he's he's telling me what he's telling me about his money situation, and for me I said hey it's this is if these things ever sell we got to split this fifty fifty and I ain't taking no for an answer something I gotta add I gotta put something into this. So uh, as the, for me, I looked at it like he's got to, he has to get something back. Mr. Bruch, during your time living at the Eastern Columbia building, did you develop a relationship uh, with the defendant in this case, Ms. Hurd? Yeah. And did you get along with Ms. Hurd? I loved her. I fell in love with her just like Johnny fell in love with her. I fell in love with her. She's uh, uh, totally respectful, gracious to me. Uh, that she's got great teeth, uh, that she treated me with complete respect. Anytime I walk into the, she's at the humor wise, total uh, locker, locker room humor, demented humor, totally laughed at, you know, the jokes, uh, made the jokes, totally got along with her. Every time I walked into their place, Isaac, you want something to eat? Isaac, you want something to drink? Every time. There's only one time I remember that she didn't offer because I walked in and she's in the kitchen at the counter and she's doing a beauty facial mask and uh, so she can't offer me. And I'm going, hey, is that something that can help me? And she looked at me and she goes, no. And that, and I'm laughing and then she laughed after because she didn't realize she was making a joke. So, um, yeah, Mr. I Bruch, loved her. Mr. Bruch, did Ms. Hurd ever visit you in your penthouse? Yeah. Do you recall the first time that she visited you there? Yes. When was that? The first time is that uh, it's in March when they moved in. And they were there for a, a, a couple of days, and I didn't even know. And Johnny had called me, says, hey, come over, meet my girl. And that, and then the, and so I did. And then the next day, they came over to my place uh, for the first time to see how I had set up the art studio, the uh, lights, and, you know, just what's my painting set up and stuff, and to look at other paintings. And they walked in, and I remember the first thing she said was, 
I hope we didn't keep you up last night because of all the yelling. And I, I looked at her and I says, no, these walls are like three feet thick. I don't hear deadly squat. How did she seem when she said that to you? Well, she's is it semi-joking and inquisitive, you know, like they did, you know, to find out. Um, in your three and a half years living at the Eastern Columbia Building, did you have opportunities to observe Mr. Depp's and Ms. Hurd's uh, relationship? Yeah. Can you describe uh, what you observed about their relationship? They were always loving with each other. They treated each other like gold, you know, kissing and, and you know, can, what can I get you type of thing, you know, being kind with each other. Always loving, always a loving situation. How often would you say you interacted with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? If they were there, because they're traveling, they're doing, they're working and doing stuff. If they were there, I saw them maybe two, three times a week. Could maybe uh, uh, there might be one time, one time a week that I see them, that I go over to hang out or, you know, see them, or they might come or. Johnny might come over to visit or, you know, like that. Since you've known them, um, did you ever see them get physically violent with each other? Never. Did you ever see them argue? Yes. How, how many times? Probably like twice. Okay. Um, can you describe the arguments that you witnessed? The first argument that I remember was uh, walking in, uh, there was a... It was a telephone argument. Johnny's at the kitchen table and he's arguing, he's, he's, he's screaming about something. And on the other line, because it's on speaker and he's talking with the phone, at, at the phone, uh, the other person is, is Amber. And that she's in New York and he's uh, at the kitchen table and uh, they're arguing. And he's going, who is it? Who is it? And she's saying, oh, baby, come on, please don't. What are you doing, baby? Why are you being like this, baby? And this went on for a little while, and I'm listening, and then he hangs up. She calls back again, and it's the same thing. Who is it? What's going on? Who is it? And she's, she's saying, oh, come on, baby, don't be, what are you, what are you doing, baby? And, and then hang up the phone again. The third time it happens, I'm saying, this, well, there's no solution in this conversation. I grab the phone from him and I says, hey, Amber, this is Isaac. Listen, this conversation is now over. And I hung up the phone. And she didn't call back again. And he went to the couch and went to bed. I believe you said you saw them argue twice. Was there another time that you saw them argue? Uh, I ended up uh, going over, and there's at the kitchen table is Johnny, is Amber, is uh, Rocky, and Josh, and they're pa and I'm going, what are you guys doing? And they're hanging out, and they're pow p trying to plot a f to figure out a way how to get rid of Whitney to not live there anymore. And I felt bad. I like Whitney, so was, you know, oh, well, you know, that's that's going to be a drag. And uh, I, was, I was, you know, what are you plotting? You know, how do you figure out? Hey, lend your sister some dough and let her move out. But, you know, they're trying to figure something out, something differently or whatever. At one point, so uh, there was a point, Johnny got completely, uh, you know, flustered and, uh, and frustrated. And he got up and he walks away. And as he's walking away, he says, figure it out. And that was it. That was the whole thing. I don't know if you want to call it, I don't think you uh, might, might call that an argument, but. Uh, Your Honor, I'm about to um, switch gears a little bit. It might okay. be a good time for a mid-morning break. Perfect, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and uh, have you take your morning recess for 15 minutes, okay? Just remember, do not talk to anybody and do not do any outside research, okay? And we'll see you back here in 15 minutes. Mr. Baruch, were We're you back. Still <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming back. Yes. Um, were you still living in Penthouse 2 of the Eastern Columbia Building on May 21st, 2016? Yes. yes. Do you recall what you were doing that evening? Yes. What were you doing? 
I was out, it was evening time, I'm out in the neighborhood, and I'm on my way home. I get a phone call from my friend to, uh, who wants to know if I want to go out and eat. I said I just ate, but uh, I'm five minutes away from, from the Eastern Columbia building, home, and uh, I go across the street, get something to eat, and uh, bring it up for takeout, and we'll go upstairs to my joint and we'll eat. And yeah. Did you meet your friend back at the Eastern Columbia building? Yeah. Around what time was that? 9.30. What happened after you met your friend? We went upstairs. Uh, can we pull up um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 116 again, please? And Your Honor, given that this has already been admitted, I'd ask that it be published. All right, that's fine. You can publish it. You just can't see it. Okay, he still has it. Mr. Bruch, is it on the screen in front of you? Yeah. Okay, great. Yes. Mr. Bruch, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about what happened after you went upstairs that evening. Um, and it may be helpful for you. There are controls on that screen um, that you can use to sort of mark the exhibit to show the jury the, the spots that you're talking about and, and identifying. So okay. if, you, if you just touch it, you, it'll, it'll make a mark. So you don't have to touch the top. That's fine. Do I touch no. something on menu here? No, you don't. No, just wait and you can oh. touch it whenever she needs you to, to mark it. Just wherever I touch it, it's going to make a mark. It will. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Birch, when you um, got upstairs that evening with your friend around 930, yeah. um, what did you see? We got out of the elevator and, you know, just like in the graph, you, you make a left and then you turn the corner. When we walked out, I noticed on the floor there's uh, shards of glass, there's pieces of glass. And so, you know, I was just looking going, oh, something busted. It could be one of the sconces or something like that and kept walking. Can you mark on the exhibit where you saw the broken glass that evening? Yeah. Right there, right where you could go left or you could go right. And if you wanted to go to the pool area, that's you could there's an exit that way. So you could either go right or you go left. You go left, you're in the apartment going in the hallway through the apartment or you go right, right there in that spot. And did you continue on to your penthouse after you saw the broken glass? Oh, yeah. So we walk, walk around and then we make the turn. We hang the right past the uh, penthouse five, and we stop right in front of, right here. What, and why did you stop right there? Oh, stopped in front of here, pen, penthouse one, which is more, it's more, right there, because there's this puddle of wine, huge puddle of wine on the floor that's in front of the door, and there's a, a wine, uh, the splashed wine that's dripping down the wall. And so we stopped, and I'm looking at it and going, look at this. These, someone must have got hammered. These guys probably had a party. And, and at that point, right then, as soon as I said that, the door opens up, and it's Josh Drew, who pokes his head out the door, only enough for his head to come out. And he's pretty bug-eyed and looks distraught. And I look at him, and I go, What's up with the spilt wine? And I figure and I get an explanation or whatever. And uh, he says, he looked at me and just said, rough day, had a rough day. And at that point, I got concerned and said to him, because I'm friends with, with him, you know? I got concerned, I said, hey, you okay? You want me to help you with something? Do you need help? He said, no, it's okay, we got it. And I said, okay. And I, me and my buddy took off and went into my place. And what did you do after that? Keep my buddy ate. Uh, I believe he had pizza from across the street. And uh, we talked, we yapped for a while and you know, could, could be, I could yap. So it could, you know, it could take, we were there probably an hour and change or something like that. And then uh, 
he's, you know, we're done. So it's, I walked, I walked him out and walked down, went to the elevator, walked out, went to the elevator. We went downstairs. I walked him out the door, finished the, to finish the conversation that we were having. And I said, all right, see ya. And then I went back in. I went upstairs and I went to bed. Around what time was that that you went back into the Eastern Columbia building? You know something, it's, it's, if we got there at like around 9.30 and we, we're talking, I don't know, an hour, two, an hour and a half, two hours, you know, somewhere around 11 o'clock, I would think. We can go ahead and take um, Exhibit 116 down. Mr. Baruch, can you um, describe for the jury the events of the next day, May 22nd, 2016? Yes. It's my birthday. May 22nd is my birthday. I wake up. I end up uh, texting Johnny and saying, hey, I'm going to be in town because he's not staying at the, at the Eastern Columbia building. He's staying in a house in, in town. Okay. And uh, so I texted him, it's my birthday. I said, listen, I'm gonna be in town. Uh, I'm gonna come by and to, uh, to have a birthday drink. Okay. I didn't t hear from him, you know, I didn't get an answer back, but I said, that's what I'm doing. If that happens, that happens. But, so it was uh, around t uh, noon, noon time, uh, that I, so I left. I walked out of my apartment and I go through the hallway, as you see the graph. I go through the hallway, and I turn the corner from Penthouse Street. And uh, as I'm walking down, well, who do I see? I see a group of people. It's a guy in black clothes, uh, a, a black shirt, black pants, Amber Heard. And I see Josh Drew who's leaning up against the door, and the door is open. This door is open, something's going on, and as I'm walking up, I'm saying, hey, what's up, what are you guys doing? And then Amber turns to me as I'm walking up. Amber turns to me, and she says, uh, Johnny came by last night, he got violent, so I'm changing the locks on one, three, and five. And I'm look at her, and, and she goes, oh, and don't worry about two, you're okay. And at this point, I'm now walking past. So now we're all in front of this, of the open door of the apartment. And I see there's two guys, two locksmiths working on the door. So now I'm standing on one side and you, uh, you have Josh Drew on one side of the door. You got the two locksmiths with the door open working on it. Sunlight's, the, the sun's coming through the door sunlight from windows and then amber is in is in front of me and there's the security guy and and that with two feet away from each other talking and she introduces me as she as she's finishing saying uh, oh don't worry about your uh your apartment she says oh and this is a security guard that i got that who's going to be hanging around and she and i got introduced she introduced me to him, and I shook his hand. He gave me a card, which I lost, and uh, and that, and I'm kind of taking this in and going. And I said, "Wait, what? What happened? What's what's going on?" And uh, at that point, Josh Drew looks at me and gives me the high sign to like, "Hey." I'll, you know, follow me. I'll, uh, I'll tell you in private. And, Mr. Uh, Rich, when you were speaking with Ms. Hurd, how close were you standing to her? Like I said, two, I'm um, two feet, a foot and a half, two feet away. We're all two feet. And how was the lighting in that area? There's lights in the hallway. But we're standing in, and we're standing in an open doorway that the wall this, uh, is all windows. Sunlight's coming through and it's, it's, you can operate in this light. There's that much light. 
Did you notice any marks on her face when you were speaking with her? No. Did you see any bruises? No. Did you see any redness? No. Did you notice any swelling? No. Did it look like Miss Hurd was wearing any makeup? No. Had you seen her wearing makeup before? Yeah. And you had seen her not wearing makeup before? Yeah, I've seen, like I said, with face, doing, with the face mask, doing a face mask, no makeup, hanging around, uh, waking up in the morning, uh, no uh, uh, with makeup, glammed out to go out. And it's, it's, it's three and a half years of seeing her in different, uh, different forms. Did you speak with Mr. Drew about anything at that point? Well, yeah, after I said that, uh, uh, hey, what's going on? And he gave me the high sign to like, hey, follow him. We went into my apartment and had a conversation. And what happened um, after you had that conversation with Mr. Drew? We left the apartment and we'd, we'd go walking back uh, towards uh, Penthouse One. And as I'm walking back, I say to Amber, as I'm walking up, he hit you? And she goes, yeah, he threw a phone at me and hit me. And I'm looking, because I had just seen her two feet away, and I'm going, where? And she puts her head out. She puts her face out like that for me to look at her, the right side of her face. And I'm looking, but at that point also, I'm looking and I turn, I turn around, get on the other side, we're in the doorway. So I'm on this side with the light shining this way from the doorway with the lights above, and, but the sunshine, and she's got her face out like this, looking, you know, to show me, and I'm looking and I go, I inspect the face. I'm looking at her forehead, I'm looking at the side of a, a side of a ride. I'm looking at a cheek. I'm looking at the, her chin. I'm looking at the other side of the face. I'm looking at the whole thing. And I don't see anything. I don't see anything to, to I don't see a, a cut, a bruise, swelling, redness. It's just Amber's face that she's going like this and showing me. So I'm not seeing anything. I back up and I'm making a joke. I make a joke going, well, I don't see anything, but maybe all the beauty from one side of your face to the other side of the face is outshining everything, so I can't see anything. And she's laughed and she's, you know, smiled. And I just looked at everybody and said, hey, this, it sounds nuts. And I went and I gave, I said, I gotta go. And I gave her a hug and kissed her on that side of the face. Kissed her on that side of the face and then I left. Said goodbye. What was her reaction when you kissed her on that side of the face? Nothing. Did she flinch? No. Did you see Ms. Hurd again the next day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When was that? So that's Monday. That was May 22nd, my birthday. So then the next day is uh, Monday, the 23rd. I had woken up. Uh, with a chest cold and uh, I heard a knock on the door and it's Amber. So I opened up the door. Around what time was that? That's, I want to say maybe around, maybe around noontime, maybe a little bit before. Maybe it could have been a little bit, I think around noontime again. And uh, I went downstairs and I opened up the door. And when you opened the door, did you have a good view of Miss Hurd? Absolutely, yeah. How was the lighting? Lighting's fine. Lighting from the, from outside, and there's light from uh, my place. Yeah, so there's the lighting was great. Did you see any marks on Ms. Hurd's face at that time? No, same thing like the, the 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 day before. There's no redness. There's no swelling. There's no bruises. There's no cuts. There's no nothing. This is Amber looking like Amber. Did you notice if she was wearing any makeup at that point? She didn't look like she was wearing makeup then either. What did Ms. Hurd say to you during that encounter? She was knocking on my door to see if uh, I would take uh, the house key, her house key, to let the cleaning lady in, because she had to go somewhere. 
And I, I woke up that day and I had some kind of chest cold thing. I was upstairs laying down. And so I, was, I looked at her and I said, hey, listen, I'm, I, I, I'm feeling sick. I'm going to be upstairs laying down this entire time for the day or whatever. And that, uh, so I can, I'm not, I can't do it. And then uh, she stood there and, and uh, is like, well, I've got to figure out what to do. Like maybe if she was only dependent upon me to, to give the housekeeper the key, it's the same, the housekeeper is, cleans both of our places. And uh, so I said, hey, listen, why don't you go ahead and take the key and put it in an envelope and bring it downstairs to the concierge, you know, one of the, and the, that's where the key will be. And tell Hilda, who is the housekeeper, that uh, that's where the key is. And uh, that's it. And you're, you're set. And she was like, yeah, okay, I guess I could do that. And I'm look, I'm three feet away from her. Two and a half, three feet away from her talking with her. And how long did that conversation last? Three minutes. Did you see Ms. Hurd again the next day? Yes, I did. Where did you see her? All right. It, uh, I go down, I'm leaving the, my apartment on Tuesday to go downstairs to the cafe to go get something hot to drink. I still haven't shopped or did anything for what's a chest cold. And uh, so I need, wanted something hot to drink. I go downstairs and uh, as I'm locking my door, that uh, all of a sudden a group of women uh, uh, walk, come up to Penthouse 3. Because in the corridor on the graph, you could see we share the same corridor. So I closed, I'm locking my door and a group of women show up. Did you recognize who the women were? Three of them, yeah. Who were they? It was, you know something, I'm unsure if it was four or five women, but it's uh, Amber, it's her sister Whitney, and it's uh, Mel uh, Melanie Iglesias, who's a makeup artist for Johnny and, and Amber. And then there's two other women I'm, I'm, that I didn't, I didn't recognize, but I'm not sure. Did you interact with the women at all? Well, I, I, after closing the door, Whitney, who calls me her spirit animal, came running, came running down the, you know, down the the hallway, going, "Isaac, spirit animal," and I'm, I'm going, "Hey, listen, I'm not feeling so hot. I'm not feeling so good." And I get duck under her arms, you know, stop. And I, I love you, but stop. And I duck under her arms and. And, uh, and I go past, and I'm, now I'm passing the other ladies, uh, Amber and her, uh, who she's with, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at them, and they're laughing at this whole scene, and then that was it. And then I walked, went past, and went down and got some hot tea. Did you see Ms. Hurd's face during that encounter? It was a quick glance, but nothing, you know, nothing just, just shot out to me to like notice anything. Um, did you see Ms. Hurd again the day after that? Well, I saw her again that day. Oh, can you describe that, please? Yeah. That, that on the way back from me being outside at the cafe, getting uh, having a, a tea, I come walking back in, and now all her, her and her, the women that she was with are coming back out, and we're in the lobby. And so, and the the doors of the lobby, it's all windows, there's great light shining through the entire lobby. And the women, are, there's a table in the middle of the lobby, and her, uh, her friends, or uh, I don't know if they're friends or not, I know three, you know, one's a sister and the other one's a friend. They're coming, they're walking on one side of the table, and then she's on the other side of the table where I'm walking, and now we're, wa we're walking past each other, and she's, you know, of course, we're going to acknowledge each other and looking at each other. And now she, she's the sun shining right in our face. It's to my back because I'm walking in. And so that's like this and, and saying, all right, hey, all right, enjoy yourself. Have a good time or whatever, whatever you're doing, you know, and go by. And I went up. 
And that was it. That was the second time that I saw her. And that's on Tuesday. And did you get a good look at her face during that oh, second encounter? absolutely. The sun shining right on her face. Did you notice anything unusual about her face? Nothing. No, no, no uh, cuts, no bruises, no swelling, no uh, red, redness, no... It's Amber. It's Amber's face. And then did you see Ms. Hurd again the day after that? Yes, I did. And that's Wednesday, May 25th? That's right. Where did you see her? At that point, I was like, okay, I got to shop for something to, because uh, otherwise I'm not going to get rid of this chest cold. I, I would go to the store, and on the way back, in between the garage and the building, there's this room with, like, vestibule, you know, that's, uh, that's you have to walk through. And I'm coming in to go into the building, and Amber and Whitney, her sister, are coming out of the building to go into the garage. And we met there. How long did you speak with them, if at all? Yeah, we spoke. That's so we're, it, we're facing each other. Um, them, uh, Amber and Whitney are st st across from me. We're two and a half feet, two feet away from each other talking. Of course, and so we stop, of course. To say, hey, what's up? What are you doing? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you coming from? I have bags of food in my hand of, of stuff that I went and I bought. And so I said, hey, I'm coming from shopping. I finally bought myself some stuff to get rid of this chest cold thing. And uh, they go and this, they're going to the uh, CVS. And they look at me and they and so what's yapping? Everything, everyone's smiling and stuff and. And she says, you sure we, you, we can't get you anything? Do you, how about we get you some aspirin or some, you know, some uh, cold stuff? I said, no, I think I got everything. And uh, that, and they said, you sure? And I said, yeah, yeah, of course, I got it. Don't, so don't sweat it. And, uh, I, uh, you know, a kiss or whatever. I got my hands, I can't hug or whatever. So, and then, uh, uh, I was said to see you, and I went on, went up, and they went through the garage. That was the. That was that was it that day. Did you have a good look at her face during that conversation? Yes, this room. Yes, yeah, this room. It's com it's it's completely lit. That it's a spot, and there's a camera, uh, taking uh. uh, uh you know, cameras always on the security camera, and all, always and so it's got good lighting and stuff because this is a spot where if you use your, uh, your fob key to to go into this into the building, well, the door takes a long time to you know it's, it's one of those things with the uh, pressure thing that the, the door just doesn't close shut. It takes a while to for it to close. Someone could be in the garage who's not supposed to be in the garage, run and hold the door open. And that they, then they get into the apartment building and then who knows, some, maybe somebody gets ripped off. But so it's well lit for security reasons and that there's a, there's a camera there. It's taking pictures, uh, you know, doing what the camera does. Was Ms. Hurd wearing makeup during that um, discussion? Neither of them looked like they were wearing makeup at all. Whitney had this hat on that uh, it was a fun hat or whatever, uh, and that no, no, no makeup. I don't, I don't even know Whitney to to be a a, a makeup person. And that uh, Amber, no, she looked like she was, you know, just natural Amber. It's it's all, you know, just as always, no makeup. Did you notice any marks on Miss Hurd's face? No, no. Did you notice any swelling? No, no swelling. No, there's no nothing. There's no swelling, no bruising, no redness, no cuts, no... I don't even, you know, nothing. Turning back to uh, May 21st for a second, when you first heard that Ms. Hurd told you Mr. Depp had hit her. Do you recall that? Say that again? 
When Ms. Hurd told you that Mr. Depp had hit her on May 22nd? Yeah, my birthday. How did you feel hearing her say that? All right. What's the relevance to how he felt? I mean, it's a present sense impression of how he I'll perceived that in that moment. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Bruch, did you see Ms. Hurd at all the rest of that week of May 23rd? No. Did you learn at some point in time that Ms. Hurd had filed for divorce from Mr. Depp? Say that again? Did you learn at some point in time that Ms. Hurd had filed for divorce from Mr. Depp? Yeah. How did you learn that? I learned it from the internet after the weekend around as probably Monday, sun, either Sunday or Monday, I'm on the internet and I end up seeing a picture of, it was the Friday of that, the, that week, the past week, and there's a picture of Amber wearing a black morning dress and with this brown mark on her cheek and that she's, out, she's been to a, a divorce, uh, you know, she went to go file for divorce. That's how I found out. Were you surprised when you saw that? Surprised is not the word. It's like, what the hell is this? What's going on? At any point when you had seen her um, during that prior week, had she told you that she intended to file for divorce? Objection. Maybe. I'll, I'll allow it. Go ahead. You can answer the question, sir. What's the question again? At any point when you had seen her during that week, had Ms. Heard told you that she intended to file for divorce? No, no, she never once, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday or Friday, not even see it, no. There's no, I, I'm clueless. She does not, she did not say anything about divorce. So what did you think when you saw those pictures um, and read the articles and learned that she was filing for divorce? Okay. All right. I'm sorry, objection relevance to what right. he thought. It, I mean, it relevance? builds on all of the testimony he's given previously. Right. Right. I'll sustain the objection. When did you see Ms. Hurd next after that? She knocks on my door June 3rd, Friday, Friday, a Friday night, June 3rd. She knocks, I've, she knocks on my door around 11 o'clock. Is, and is the next time that I see her. And what happened when she knocked on your door on June 3rd? I opened the door. I opened up the door. Naturally, you know, something I'll say is, hey, how you doing? You know, to say hello. So I open up the door and say, hey, how you doing? And she looks at me and she says, I'm not feeling so hot that uh, I made some food. Would you like to come over and eat with me? And at that point, after you know everything I've seen, I looked at her. I said, "Listen, me and you, we're not going to talk anymore. After everything that I've just seen all week long, from from the past couple, past week and change, you, uh, listen, I'm confused, I'm angry, and I'm frustrated by everything that I've seen. And that I think the best thing is for me and you that we don't talk anymore." Did That's, you say anything in response? Yes, she. In response to that, she looks at me and she says, I told Johnny I don't want anything. The lawyers are making me do all, all of this. And I, you know, that's what she said. Did you respond to Ms. Hurd? No, what I was thinking was that to me when after saying that, after she said that to me, I'm thinking to myself, gay cock -um yum hey, how, you know, Oh, Your Honor. I'll sustain Distracted. that objection. Next question. Did you see any injuries on Ms. Hurd's face on June 3rd when you spoke with her? No. Did you ever speak with Ms. Hurd again after that? Well, she said to me uh, after uh, that, the lawyers are making me do all of this. Uh, then she's, uh, I was just looking at her and then she ended what she was saying by saying, uh, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. And I closed the door and would never talk to her ever again.
Did you have any interactions with the staff at the Eastern Columbia building um, about Ms. Hurd's allegations uh, against Mr. Depp? Objection, Your Honor, may we approach? Okay. Mr. Bridge, did you have any interactions with the staff of the Eastern Columbia building about Ms. Hurd's allegations against Mr. Depp? Yes. And at some point, uh, did you see a security video taken in the Eastern Columbia building? Yes. When was that? At, uh, sometime in June, maybe two weeks in or something like that. It's two, three weeks in. Can you describe um, what you saw in that video? Yes, I can. It was a video of uh, Amber and Whitney waiting uh, at the elevator, a mezzanine level, coming from the garage, obviously, and uh, waiting for the elevator. And Whitney does this to Amber. Pow! And hits her, to, like faking hitting her in the face, going pow! And then they start laughing. Did Ms. Hurd react at all in that video to the fake punch that you observed Whitney throw? Yeah, the, she's laughing. After doing it, they both are, uh, you know, laughing at each other, with each other. Mr. Baruch, do you know who Elon Musk is? Sure. Have you ever seen Mr. Musk in person? Yeah. Where did you see him in person? First time was... Uh, I'm getting into the elevator on the rooftop, penthouse level. I'm get going into the elevator and he's coming out of the elevator, going past me. And when did that take place? This is after May. This is sometime June, it could be July, but after May. That in that same year, 2016? Yeah. And when was the second time that you saw Mr. Musk? Uh, one morning waking up and going and opening up the shades to uh, the bedroom and it's on the second floor and it overlooks the balconies, our joining balconies, because my balcony joins with uh, John and Amber's uh, balcony. And that I, opening up the shades, I see uh, Elon Musk going through the, the balcony door on their side uh, to then walk down a common corridor to that then at the end leads to a, a door that you then you walk out to the rest of, of the rooftop and it could be, you go to the pool you go to the gym and stuff so I'm looking out and out the view the the view out the window is of the both of our balconies so that's where I saw him and when was that Oh, I, sometimes it's, it's either June, July, some, but it's after May. Mr. Bruce, how long have you known Mr. Depp? Met him, I believe, in 1980, and uh, what's 42 years? Well, it's going to be 42 years. Have you ever seen uh, Mr. Depp be violent when angry with Ms. Hurd? Objection leading. I, I'll allow the question. I'm allowed to answer? Yes, yes. What's sir. the question again? Have you ever seen Mr. Depp be, be violent when angry with Ms. Hurd? No. Well, the, from what I said uh, from before, there was an argument that I walked in. So there's obviously there's the, that, but have I ever seen him be violent to her uh, with uh, physicality? No. Did you ever Never. see him hit her? Never. In your three and a half years living at the Eastern Columbia building next to Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, did you ever observe any injuries or marks on Ms. Hurd? Objection leading, Your Honor. All right, I'll sustain as to leading. Okay. Did you ever notice anything unusual about Ms. Hurd when you were living at the Eastern Columbia building with Objection her? leading, Your Honor. I'll allow it. I can answer? Yes, sir. What's the question again? Did you ever notice anything unusual about Ms. Hurd during the time that you were living next door to her at the Eastern Columbia building? Besides having great teeth? No. Mr. Bridge, are you appreciative of everything that Mr. Depp has done for you? Objection, Your Honor. Leading and relevant. All right, I'll sustain us to leading. All right. Mr. Bridge, how do you feel about what Mr. Depp has done for you? Objection. 
Well, you know what? No, I'll go ahead. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. I think that's what, I think that's withdrawn. Go ahead. You can answer the question. Oh. Could just answer the question, sir. And the question is How do you feel about everything that Mr. Depp has done for you? Oh, come on. This is it's unreal. Yeah, it's, you know, you think too much about it, you're going to cry. That uh, I appreciate everything that he's done for me. Um, you know, I, it's like stuff you can't pay back. Would you lie for him under oath? Oh, no, 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 no. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Have you given truthful testimony today, sir? Objection, Your Honor, leading. It's still leading. I'll sustain the objection. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bruch, do you recall um, that Ms. Bredehoff was just asking you some questions about some text messages you received from Mr. Depp? Yeah. Uh, do you recall when those text messages were sent? No, I'd have to look at them again and look at the date. Me Could you display it to the witness again, please? And I believe we looked at lines 59. Excuse me, 57. Do you see the date of when you received that text message? All right, hang on. month before it was the month before I moved out okay when was that text message sent it says uh, 10 18 2016 that's October that's I moved out the next month so in November so this is from uh, October so was that message sent several months after Ms. Heard made um, claims against Mr. Depp of uh, domestic violence Oh, yeah, yeah. Objection, I'll allow it. Yes, of course. This is after this, this whole fiasco that she started. And if we look at line 61. What am I looking at? Six. What's the date on that message? It's 1028, October. We can take that down. Mr. Bruch, uh, Ms. Bredehoff asked you a series of questions about the security video from the Eastern Columbia building that you um, observed. Do you recall that? Yeah, the PAL. Uh, when did you understand that footage was from? I'll sustain it, asked and answered. Did you have an understanding at the time that you saw that video of when it was from? Objection, Your Honor. Same question. I'll sustain the objection. Ms. Bredehoff asked, also asked you um, a series of questions about um, the argument that you overheard between Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp on the phone. Do you recall that? Yes. And you could hear um, Ms. Hurd's voice on that phone, right? Yeah. Do you recall if that was a FaceTime call or if it was just regular speakerphone? It's just it's speaker, speakerphone. And wh what did you understand her tone to be on that call that you overheard? I'll allow it if you can answer. It's fine. Taunting, egging on, almost deme uh, demeanoring uh, the baby talk. I'm going to object, Your Honor, and move to strike. Yeah, I'll, I'll sustain the objection as to his answer, and I'll strike it. The, the whole answer, Your Honor? The, the, the answer, yes. I believe you testified that Mr. Depp um, hung up the phone during that conversation. Do you recall that? Yes. Did you understand that Mr. Depp was trying to end the argument by hanging up the phone? His understanding of what Mr. Depp was trying to do. I don't sustain. That's kind of speculation. Your Honor, he, he, he heard the phone call and he was there to directly but observe. But what Johnny Depp 
okay. intention was. I'll sustain his reaction. I know what my intention Sir, sir. Oh, you, sorry. Okay, thank you. Wait for the question. Thank you, sir. What was your understanding of um, your intent with respect to uh, hanging up the phone on, on that Objection, conversation? Right. He already asked and answered when he said he hung it up. Um, and so it was asked and answered. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Next question. Nothing further. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? 